Well, brethren, uh, all of us have heard about our Messiah's statement that he's made. We've probably heard it many times. In Matthew 24, 6, where he says, There shall be wars and rumors of wars. We know that's true today as well as, as it was back when he said it and for centuries later, even centuries before that, there were wars. But brethren, today, in this day and age in our society, there is a war going on right now and has been, <clears throat> excuse me, for centuries, that's really a battle for the mind. It's what it really comes down to. And this is what I want to talk about today, the battle for the mind. There are people, brethren, all around our nation here in the United States that are battling for our influence, to influence us and our minds. There's politics, all the politicians. Uh, they're very good at it. They can scare us or maybe feel, make us feel more comfortable at times. Then there's governments. They do it all the time. They want to influence us and have us go in their direction. Then there's the press. Everybody knows what that is, the news media. They're constantly trying to influence us to believe in what they're saying. And there's the entertainment industry, which is really big. They spend billions in entertainment every year to influence us in our minds in various ways, of course. Then there's business people. They want us to buy their products, so they advertise. There's the advertisement industry. Everybody is well aware of that. There's selling cars. You, everybody knows what, <laughs> how we're influenced to buy certain cars, certain models, and so on. Then there's the educational system. And boy, is that ever an influence to gain access and control of people's minds. Uh, it is phenomenal how they do it on college campuses today. And then, of course, there's the religious groups uh, all around the country who are vying for our interest in their religious beliefs and so on. So it just seems, brethren, that on, on a daily basis, we can put it down to a daily basis, we all face a battle for influencing our mind in various ways, for our attention and ultimately for our minds. We all go through it, and that's why it's so important for us to read the scriptures, understand it, and know what's truth and what isn't. And I found out in just basic research in this subject that there are psychological techniques used by a lot of different people in business, education, and so on that try to influence us, various psychological techniques to try to manipulate us into thinking their way and so on and so forth. In our school systems, colleges, and so on, which I had mentioned previously, there's an ongoing sort of uh, a type of um, I'm going to call it warfare, psychological warfare, to really influence and gain access to and control, and through teaching, that is, on these campuses, people's minds, our students, the young people, to influence what we think, how we think, and on the religious side, to convert people, different ways they have of doing that. Well, what it really boils down to, brethren, is that mankind, by way of how our Father designed us and gave us life on this earth, okay, we are designed to be functioning by the Scriptures, by the Bible, by how our Father in Heaven made us. We're designed to function that way. But there's a lot of people, sad to say, excuse me, <coughs> around this country who just ignore the scriptures. They just throw it over their shoulders, they tear it up, they're not interested, and they just don't want to be bothered with reading what I'm going to call the owner's manual, it's the scriptures, the Bible, as to how we're supposed to be conducting ourselves and how we're supposed to live. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> You've all heard of that. Some time ago, I mentioned that maybe we should uh, change the Star Spangled Banner lyrics to <clears throat> an old song 
that says, I did it my way by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> now, you know, it, I just did it my way. And that's a lot of things is what's happening today, brethren, in society. Let's go over to Isaiah 55, verse 8. Isaiah. Our Father in heaven tells us here, brethren, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my way. Now, the human mind, brethren, apart from divine wisdom and learning about divine wisdom, when you really think about it, we're not on our Creator God's wavelength. I think that's obvious to all of us. We look around our country and we see the decisions that many, many people are making, both in government, outside of government, the school system, and so on. We're not on the wavelength of our Father in Heaven and what He wants us to do. Our Father in Heaven, our Creator God, seeks to influence us the right way. He wants us to know Him and His way of life constantly. Isaiah 55, you'll go there again. This is what he says about that. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. He states here, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth I will not, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Our Father in heaven makes that very clear to us in the book of Isaiah. Our Father in heaven's way of life, brethren, has been tried and tested and proven down through the centuries. It has been. We can see that through history. Now, if anyone person or groups of people, that is, if they ignore God's way, then another force steps right in. It's like filling a vacuum. They, they refuse to believe in our Creator, to follow His way. Another force moves right in to influence, and that is satanic influence. That is so obvious to us today, brother, we can see it happening all around us. In, in, as I mentioned earlier, education, uh, and a lot of times in religious circles, government and business, under the influence of Saint the devil. And it's a real battle going on for the human mind. And to me, it certainly looks like it's heating up all the time. It's going in that direction. Paul the Apostle has something to say about that, about these times we live in. Turn to 1 Timothy, if you will. Let's go over to 1 Timothy. I'm going to, in chapter 4, I'm going to read to you verses 1 and 2. The Spirit clearly says that in the later days and later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. And boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, I saw a photograph, brethren, of a group of young men standing around in a circle at a college, a major university, and they, they just had their hand up in the air like they were saluting, I don't know, almost like a Hitler-like salute to some kind of organization on campus. And underneath it says, they want nothing to do with our Creator God. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what organization that was, they were saluting. But it was on a major college campus. They didn't let on the name of that organization, but it was really, really something to see uh, a group of young men doing that, okay? Leaders in government, education, industry, too, I won't leave them out, have brought the false notion, brethren, in that what our Creator God in Heaven says doesn't mean anything. You ever notice that when they're speaking? I mean, you think about the laws of righteous living, the Creator, what, what He has given us in the Scriptures, the commandments, and it seems like most of what they say, they're telling us that they, they're not interested in what our Creator God says or what He wants us to do or anything. They're not interested. It doesn't matter to them. 
Despite lessons of history, you've heard, all heard the saying, those who forget history are condemned to repeat it. Well, despite these lessons of history, you ever question your mind, why do smart men and women across this country, why are they seem so blind to truth? What is it that they're doing? Paul the Apostle has an answer for that. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, okay? I'm going to read, I'm starting in chapter 4, in verse 4. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4, in verse 4. Paul tells us here that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of, of Yahshua the Messiah, who is the image of God. So there, there's a, that's an excellent statement. The God of this age blinded these people. They allowed it to happen, brethren, because of their unbelief. They just threw their faith away, threw away the scriptures. They're not interested in teaching it or even living by it. Let's look at Ephesians 2, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. I'm going to read to you verse 2. Also, actually, I'll start in verse 1. I'll read verse 1 and 2, Ephesians. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. He's talking to the people of the church of Ephesus. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So we had a problem back then, and we still have a problem today with that, don't we? Children of disobedience. Really something. Our Messiah, brethren, and you all know this, but I'll repeat it anyway. He himself recognized who was behind all of this. If you look in Luke chapter 4, okay, Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> I'm going to read verse 5 to 8. Luke chapter 4. <coughs> Excuse me. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him an, in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to whoever, anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. From the, our Messiah said, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So you see who the, this background character is. It, it's influencing the minds of people. And this is why it's so important, brethren, for us to know the truth so we can repel and just toss out these influences that come our way from time to time. Jesus, he was tempted. I mean, <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. I said to my dad years ago, I could never go through that. I said, I'd be dead of starvation. <laughs> And he said to me, he said, well, you've got to understand who Jesus was. And he says, he was the word made flesh. And he withstood a tremendous amount of assault, spiritual assault, as well as physical later on. But um, anyway, um, I want to bring something to your attention, brethren, <clears throat> about a survey that was recently conducted on the college campuses across the United States. And in that, there... Uh, type of uh, question air that was sent around to all these campuses, or most of them. The one question was asked, do you believe in the existence of Saint and the devil? And the answer came back at the rate of 70% said, no, we don't believe that. We don't believe he exists. So then the question raises up in my mind, how is anyone of that mentality who does not believe how are they going to repel or, or ask for, pray for deliverance from the clutches of Satan the devil and his influences, which are terribly evil and very subtle? It can get an awful lot of people into a lot of trouble, and it's happening. How are they going to resist the devil? They, they don't believe he exists. That's just what he wants. And the battle for the mind is a lot easier for him to conduct onto human beings. 
because they don't believe it. Some group or someone along the line in their training has failed miserably to teach them right truth. Anyway, let's let's look at uh, James 4, the book of James, okay? Let's go over there. I want to read to you something that is interesting. The book of James. James 4 and verse 7. <clears throat> this is what James says we should do. Now, for those that don't believe the, the devil exists, well, they, they don't have any defense at all. But here's what James says. Submit yourselves then to our Creator God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Do you understand what is being said here? That If they, we submit ourselves to our Creator, we'll have that power to resist the devil because we'll know the truth and we'll know what to do. But for those 70% that don't believe he exists, like I said before, how are they going to know? How are they, what, what basis do they have to resist the devil or to even know that he is a spirit being, as Paul said, roams this earth, seeking whom he may devour? Just like a roaring lion. And that's exactly the way he is. If he, can, if he has that opportunity, he's a personal spirit being, he'll, he'll destroy people. And that's what he's out to do to humanity. They're not going to be able to put on the whole breastplate of armor of resistance. Look at Ephesians 6. Let's go to the book of Ephesians for a moment here. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read to you verse 11 here. For our struggle, uh, I'm sorry, I'll go to start uh, in um, <clears throat> verse 10, verse 10, Ephesians 6. Okay, finally, be strong in the eternal God and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, his schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Spiritual forces of evil. Wow. <laughs> so, brethren, <clears throat> it comes down to a question. How can we as God's people avoid being led astray and deceived in this life as we go on? How can we do that? Paul the Apostle gives us a strategy for a victory over this. Let's look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. I'm going to, in chapter 10, 2 Corinthians, I'm going to read to you verse 3 to 5. <clears throat> For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to our Messiah. That's one scripture, brethren. Let's go over to Ephesians again on chapter 6. Ephesians 6. <clears throat> And verse 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our, as I said earlier, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world. And believe me, it is a dark world out there, and it's getting darker, and things are really heating up. I can sense it. Brethren, in closing, I want to say that, that we, we as God's people have a struggle, and we are, well, I'm going to call, are entrenched in a spiritual trench warfare. I believe that because we're not too well liked uh, by the people out in the world in many cases. 
Um, it is spiritual trench warfare. So we have to be very careful and to follow what Paul's admonition is here and his strategy is to put on the full armor of God and know the scriptures and read them and be an inspiration to other people in our families, outside of our families, and to know the Bible and know what to do what's right. And other people will notice that who are seeking the truth. And they're going to come to us and ask questions. But again, Father, uh, brethren, it's, uh, it's a situation of trench warfare, spiritually minded, spiritual speaking. So let's be real careful in our conducting our lives and read the scriptures as often as you can, every day, I'd say, and pray about it. Because there is a war going on for our minds. And we can defeat it. We can really and truly be protected from the evils of these satanic rulers of this world.